Welcome to the Birch Bioinformatics System. My name is Brian Fristensky, and today I'll demonstrate how to install BLAST databases on your own computer. And also, I'll demonstrate how BLASTDB Kit simplifies the decision making process that goes into managing BLAST databases. While most biologists are familiar with running BLAST searches through the NCBI website, it's often faster to run BLAST on your own computer. That's because NCBI has to handle hundreds of thousands of BLAST searches every day. But the search is only one step in a more complex process, and we'll show you how the Birch Biolegato applications empower discovery by giving you extensive capabilities both for running BLAST searches as well as getting more from the results. The Birch system is unified through Biolegato, a family of applications that run other programs. When we run a program from Biolegato, output pops up in a new Biolegato object. That means that you can always do further steps with the output rather than just viewing it. There are no dead ends in the analysis. We call this process ad hoc pipelining. So here's a Biolegato object with two amino acid sequences. I will select one and then launch a BLASTP search and I'm going to search in this case the uh, PDB protein database. So all I have to do after setting parameters is click on the run button and the search will start. Output pops up first in the familiar uh, BLAST report that we see in a web browser, but we also get output in a uh, Biolegato uh, that is specialized for working with BLAST hits. So we get the same information as we do in the report, but it's in the form of a spreadsheet. If I want to retrieve some of the hits, I only have to select the hits I want and then click on run and the hits will be retrieved as GenBank entries from NCBI. From there, ad hoc pipelining, of course, lets us do any tasks we want with these sequences. So let's see what's involved in installing BLAST databases on your own system. The main problem with BLAST databases is that some of them are huge. For small databases like Uniprot, Swissprot, which is 695 megabytes, or the PDB amino acid database at 267 megabytes, even the oldest laptop can search these in a short time, and the bandwidth needed for downloads is minimal. Unless you have a relatively powerful computer and a hardwired network, you may think twice about installing, let's say, the non-redundant protein database at 404 gigabytes. If you were to install all the BLAST databases at the time this recording was made, that would be a little over one terabyte of data to download and manage. NCBI estimates that the GenBank database doubles in size roughly every 18 months. But for that purpose, the Birch Administrator's Guide on the Birch website has a very detailed set of discussions on all the different aspects of uh, installing databases and as importantly what you need to do before you start installing databases. So we'll take a look at some of those considerations now. Database searches are only as fast as the slowest component and in this case the slowest part is reading in the database each time you do a search. The single best way to speed up searches then is to keep your databases on a solid state drive. Now solid state drives degrade with frequent write operations, but with BLAST searches we only do a lot of reading and not as much writing. If we assume you're going to update the databases infrequently, maybe every few months or so, uh, a solid state device or SSD drive is well worth the cost. External drives or network drives are a little more complicated. Uh, usually a, a hard drive is the second best bet for this purpose and then slower would be a network-based drive or uh, a USB 3 drive. BLAST will use as much memory and as many CPUs as you care to uh, use with BLAST and so obviously the more uh, RAM you have and the more cores the uh, faster the database searches can go uh, in, indeed, for some of the really big databases, uh, a, a, a desktop machine may not be uh, a great choice. One of the most important considerations, though, is network load. Downloads, of course, are going to be faster on hardwired Ethernet than they will on Wi-Fi. And the other big thing is that if you are doing searches, let's say, from home, there may be some pretty 
uh, strong limits on the amount of uh, gigabytes you can download, uh, for example, in one month. When a single database may be 100 gigabytes, that's a big consideration. When you're downloading databases, there are several places you can choose from for downloading the files by FTP, that's NCBI and the uh, European Bioinformatics Institute in the UK, as well as the DNA Data Bank of Japan. Now you also have to think about backups because um, you don't want to be backing up your GenBank files. First of all, it would make backups take a lot longer because these files once again are big. And if you're backing up across the network, then you definitely don't want to be backing up your, your databases uh, because that'll g generate a huge amount of network traffic. In fact, the same amount as when you downloaded the files in the first place. So the most configuring your backup scripts uh, you really want to ignore the GenBank files and make sure that the uh, directory that contains those files is not being backed up. You can always download fresh copies from NCBI. So now I'll get to our demonstration of the process of installing and managing BLAST databases using BioLegato. These tasks are done using the BioLegato Birchadmin tool, which we can see here in the slide. And I'll just mention, by the way, that Birchadmin does its work by calling a Python script called BlastDBKit. At the end, I'll say more about BlastDBKit, but for now, I'll just point out that uh, BlastDBKit obviously can be run at the command line, which would let you automate your uh, downloads and backups if you wanted to do it that way. So Birchadmin can run the following tasks. Set the location of the database, get a spreadsheet report of disk usage on the local or remote copies of the databases, and add, delete, or update databases. I'll preface our demo by saying that you could do all these things manually, but only after a lot of reading, a lot of digging for information, and a bit of experimenting with mistakes along the way. One of the underlying principles of Birch is, we've done all that stuff so you don't have to. So let's start our demo. I can assume that at this point you've already installed Birch on your system, and if that's the case, there's probably nothing to do at this step. However, as we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of considerations because of the size of the database files. So let's at least describe where the files go, and even though you don't need to know exactly uh, the details I'm going to be talking about, uh, it is useful to be aware of them. We'll start by looking at the main Birch directory, which as you can see is in home Birch, and so it's a subdirectory of that called Birch. And then within that directory, there's a directory called GenBank. And by the way, um, the term directory is a Unix term that is synonymous with folder, so I can use the words directory and folder interchangeably. So the GenBank directory actually, in this case, is not uh, physically within the Birch directory, but rather it's a symbolic link to another directory. And so if I go over to this terminal window uh, and type ls-l, uh, you can see that the GenBank name is actually a link that points to another directory called home GenBank. So this is sort of what I was talking about before. Uh, the reason I put the GenBank directory elsewhere is because it makes it easier to tell the backup scripts just don't back up that directory. So when the Birch directory gets backed up, the only thing here that will get backed up is the link to the GenBank directory. So that's just a little bit of strategic planning on uh, making it easy not to actually back up the databases. If we go into the GenBank database, you can see that we have individual files. Uh, these are the raw data files with the metadata as well as the sequence for uh, the different uh, databases. So this is RefSeq, the reference RNA database, and the uh, uh, so you can also see it's broken up into a number of files. Uh, RefSeq RNA 0, 01, 02, and so forth. So that's a big database. And then we also have um, the SwissProt database, which manages to fit into a single section. So I could also look at the same thing there. And that shows me, once again, the, uh, the same files. 
I want to just zoom in on this terminal window for just a moment to show you that the location of the BLAST databases uh, is determined by an environment variable called BLASTDB. So if I type echo dollar blast db, it shows me the location of the blast uh, db database. Now this is a, a very important variable that's used by all of the blast programs. So we had to set it to point to the directory where the databases are, are installed or going to be installed as we install new ones. And so uh, this is automatically done when you uh, do a, a Birch installation. But I just wanted to bring to your attention that this BlastDB variable is the critical thing that the Blast programs use. Maybe one other point on Mac OS, uh, OS X, uh, the BlastDB directory would probably be something like slash users slash Birch slash uh, Birch slash GenBank uh, because the home directories go in a little different place on the, on the Mac. Fortunately you can do everything that you need to do with databases uh, directly through Biolegato. So I'm going to launch the main Birch uh, Biolegato and then in the file menu Birch Admin. So Birch Admin is the administration tool that handles just about everything in, uh, in Biolegato. So all BLAST database tasks are done in the update, add, install uh, menu. So we have here, first of all, choose BLAST uh, directory database. So this is already set when you do a Birch installation to the GenBank directory within Birch. So usually you don't have to do anything here. And so uh, I'm going to just close that. To guide the decision-making process as to which databases you want to install, it's useful to have a look at the FTP site where all of the database files are found. So here is a listing of the files at the NCBI uh, FTP site for BLAST databases. And you can see at the beginning the 16S sequences, the 18S, the 28S sequences, beta coronavirus, all of those are um, a single file. So the entire database is small enough that it can be in, in, uh, put in a single file. Uh, the 16S sequences, for example, only take up about 34 megabytes. Now if we scroll down to the metagenomic sequences in the NNT database, that database is broken out down into a large number of files. And they have numbers 00, 01, 02, going all the way down to um, Zero, uh, 34. And so fortunately BlastDB kit only requires you to specify the name of the database. It will take care of finding all of the files for each database and uh, downloading them. By the way, you'll see some files with a .md5 file extension. Those are tiny files. Those are checksums that are used to determine whether a database file has been downloaded uh, without any errors. So BlastDB Kit gives you two important decision-making tools to guide your choice of which databases to install. And this is in the reports menu. So there are two reports that you can have a look at. One is a report on the locally installed databases. And then the other is a report on all of the databases at NCBI or EBI or the uh, uh, DDBJ in, in Japan. So let's take a look first at the local database. So that comes up in a spreadsheet and we can uh, maybe zoom in just a little bit on that. <coughs> so you can see here it tells us the databases are installed in the GenBank directory. It tells us the size of the disk that we have. This is a really old computer, so it's not a big hard drive, only 313 gigabytes. Uh, we've used 125 gigabytes, and there are about 172, 173 available. So we've got two databases that are installed, the uh, RefSeq RNA and SwissProt, and, which is also known as Uniprot, by the way. Those together take up about 30 gigabytes of space, and we can see the dates when they were last updated. So I'm going to zoom out. And then we'll take a look at the other report. We'll put this one off 
to the side and that's the report on the databases at NCBI or EBI or DDBJ and here we have once again the uh, databases and their sizes but we actually have two size um, numbers the first is the size of the files so for example the non-redundant nucleotide database I guess I need to uh, make this a little bit bigger here is uh, going to download uh, uh, with a total of 65 gigabytes uh, of, of files and then when those are decompressed they will expand out to uh, 152 gigabytes so we have both an idea of what the download uh, network traffic is going to be as well as the disk space needs and so these are all of the available databases and then the total download size if we were going to install every database would be uh, about 483 gig gigabytes and then the total installed size would be a little over a terabyte of data uh, as of this uh, recording that we're making today and CBI estimates that these databases uh, uh, double in size roughly every 18 months so if I want to decide uh, whether I have enough space to, to download certain databases um, I can easily use the spreadsheets to help me make that decision and the first step is almost always going to be just making a copy of the um, existing spreadsheet so I'm going to make a new spreadsheet as to work on and then um, I'm going to copy and then paste and then all I have to do is delete the databases I don't want and uh, the spreadsheet will, will recalculate how much space I'm going to need. So let's say for example that I want to start with the uh, PDB uh, amino acid database. I want to add that one. So I'll just delete everything I'm not going to uh, install and then maybe the other one that I'll choose is the, uh, uh, the beta corona virus uh, database just because it's timely. So again I'll delete the ones that I don't want and then everything above that I'm also going to delete actually delete and when it recalculates the numbers we will need uh, to download 135 gigs of data and then that will expand out to 18 or sorry megabytes of data and that will expand out to 823 megabytes when these files are decompressed so I can just quickly check on my local spreadsheet and remember that we have 172 gigabytes to work with so we're fine to download these small databases. Now that's, a, that's of course a trivial example uh, when you're wanting to download a large number of databases and some of them quite big this becomes an important uh, ability to ca do these calculations fairly easily this is a non-trivial point because for example I think right now the largest database is the eukaryotic uh, representative genomes at 187 gigabytes and so that's uh, the download and then the uh, final size is just under 200 gigabytes so uh, you may not want to install this on every machine the other consideration aside from disk space as I've mentioned is network bandwidth um, unless the databases are really small I wouldn't try to do this over Wi-Fi you really want to do this on a hardwired connection so uh, if you did want to install some of the bigger databases on your laptop the way to do it would be to bring it into campus or your, your institute wherever you have a very high speed connection and connect it to a an Ethernet port download it that way or maybe one other alternative would be download all the files onto a hard drive on a machine that's networked copy them to a USB drive and then bring the USB drive home and and up, upload the files from your USB drive onto the hard drive once again you, you don't want to try to do searches on a USB drive you want the files to be installed on a hard drive or a solid state drive otherwise uh, 
uh, the I.O. is going to be very slow. So we've chosen the databases we want to install. Uh, now let's actually do it. This is going to be kind of anticlimactic because after all this preparation, all we have to do is check a few boxes. So I'm going to open up the um, menu for adding files to the BLAST database. And there's our menu. And so uh, the first thing to notice is that it's broken down to protein databases uh, in the protein tab, nucleotide databases, high throughput sequencing databases, uh, for example, metagenomics, and then the other category just has taxonomy in it. Now, for each database, there's either a plus or a minus in the left-hand column indicating whether it's installed or not. And so RefSeq DNA is installed, and then the protein end, the other one is Uniprot. Now, uh, by default, it makes sense that the default for add is to do nothing. So all of the checkboxes uh, for, for do nothing are checked. So that means that if you want to add a database, you have to click on the add button. So here we have beta coronavirus. I'm going to add that one. And then going over to protein, since we want the PDB uh, amino acid database, I'm going to click on that one. So that we've now set up our retrieval. And all we have to do is to click on the run box. So I'm, I'm going to uh, do that. And we get a confirmation. And this is a good idea because if you wanted to change your mind, you, you could say no at this point. But I know this is what I want, so I'm going to click on yes. And we get a uh, notification now telling us that there will be an email message sent once the um, installation is complete. And I have to just uh, give you a, a little bit of a a uh, hedge on that. Email is only going to work if your computer already has a mail server. So that would be the case if you had a, a mail client like Outlook or Thunderbird already working on your machine. Uh, if you're on a Linux machine, you would probably want to install Postfix. Uh, the key thing is, if you want to get these mail messages, you have to separately install a mail uh, server, and that's beyond the uh, uh, what we can do in this video, but uh, if you just do a Google search on uh, setting up email uh, server for your platform, uh, you'll find out how to do that. So um, this we, we have these mail notifications because at the end of the day, these things might take a long time if you're downloading some of the large databases. One nice thing is once the, the download is launched, you can log out, close everything down, and the download will proceed uh, in the background. And then you just uh, 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 log in again later uh, after you get your uh, email notification. So here's a screenshot from my sh phone showing that the ad was completed. It tells you the uh, source uh, uh, FTP site as well as the destination directory on your system. It tells you the start time. You get a message for each successful database installation, and then finally a finish and an elapsed time. So in this case, these two small databases only took about 21 seconds to download, uncompress, and de-archive. And so uh, that was pretty quick. And this is even on a home internet uh, connection. Uh, you might get a faster uh, download at, uh, let's say, a university site. So I'm going to generate a report once again showing that the databases have been updated, or added, I should say. You can see now the, uh, the four databases that have been installed, uh, or the four that we have, and two that were installed were uh, beta coronavirus and PDBAA, and we get a, a revised number for the amount of uh, number of gigabytes, 30 gigabytes total in the databases, and how much space is available. Maybe the only other thing to point out is that if I wanted to um, see the uh, uh, menus, if I'll just go back to the menus for a minute, there's still a minus sign here with beta coronavirus, and there would be one as well for uh, the 3D structure uh, proteins. And that's because 
uh, these menus don't get updated until the next time you launch uh, the Birch Admin tool. So that's not a problem. I just have to um, uh, launch Birch Admin once again. And there's the Admin tool. And our Add menu now shows a plus for Beta Corona and a plus for the PDB database. Aside from uh, updating the uh, databases in, in uh, the Birch Admin tool, the other thing that BlastDB Kit does is to add the databases to the different menus for programs like BlastN or tBlastN or tBlastX. And so here's an example of the BlastN menu and you can see we now have RefSeq and Beta Coronavirus as uh, databases that we can search if we do a BLAST uh, search with nucleotide sequences. If we go over here to BL Protein, which runs protein tasks, the database menu, of course, will have the BLAST programs, the search uh, with protein query sequences. So in addition to Uniprot, we now have the uh, PDB uh, database. So these menus are automatically added by BLASTDB Kit so that we immediately have them at our disposal uh, for searching the databases. Maybe the only other thing to add is that uh, if you had these programs running, you would have to restart them in order to see those additions to the database uh, menu. The install update menu looks almost identical to the add menu, but there's one big difference. The install update menu defaults to update only those databases that are currently installed. So for example, RefSeq RNA has a plus in this column. That means it will be installed and updated. Most of the others have a minus and those are set to do nothing by default. So if we wanted to add another database, that would be easy to do. I could just click on the install update button and that would be added at this time. But uh, by default, it's going to work only on the databases we currently have and those databases will only be updated if there's a new version on the NCBI website. So at this point I could click on run and then of course I get the message once again. It just reminds me of the list of databases that will be updated. Notice also though that TaxDB is included. TaxDB is needed by all the other databases so a copy of TaxDB is included with every database download. It's a small database, so it's not a lot of extra network traffic, and that way you know for a fact you've got the updated version of TaxDB. So I think at this point we're ready to go, and I will click on the uh, Run or the Yes button, and then uh, we'll get an email when the download is complete. So this is a screenshot from an email uh, that was actually done uh, uh, at a, in a previous uh, session, but it shows, for example, that the RefSeq RNA download uh, was successful. Each file uh, is listed as being successful as they get installed. Uh, this one also uh, installed beta coronavirus and SwissProt, and then with PDBAA, that one was up to date, so it tells us there was nothing to install. Now, just to make the point, by the way, because RefSeq is so large, the total download and installation took about 46 minutes. That might be faster on a uh, really fast internet connection. This is, was done at home, and so the uh, uh, download speeds may not be quite as, as fast. Maybe one final point to make is that your network connection is not the only determining factor. Uh, traffic between you and the FTP site is important and then also whatever the load is at the FTP site. So if NCBI is really busy that day, uh, your down, let download may take longer. Deleting is a lot like adding or updating with the exception that all the databases have a default of do nothing. That makes sense because you don't want to accidentally delete a database that took hours to download. Maybe the only other thing to say is that deletion is very quick and should generally be almost instantaneous. Deletion will also remove the database from the database search menus in BLDNA and BL Protein. Remember though, you would need to restart Birch Admin, BLDNA, or BL Protein to see those changes appear in the menus. 
Remember that I mentioned that Birch Admin calls BlastDB Kit to do all database operations. In some cases, you might want to run BlastDB Kit directly from the command line. So here's the uh, BlastDB Kit manual page, which shows all of the command line options that we have for this program. And let's just look at a few examples. So in the first example, we're seeing the addition of three databases, the non-redundant uh, protein database, non-redundant nucleotide, and patented nucleotide databases. So that's the, the DB list, a comma separated list, and those are being added. So this is the uh, command that Birch admin would generate if it was adding those three databases. If you wanted to add all of the databases from NCBI, it's even simpler. It would be blastdbkit.py add dblist all. So the all keyword indicates in this context all of the NCBI databases. Uh, you could do that, but just remember that's about 483 gigabytes to download and 1.1 terabytes of disk space. This is a convenient one, Blast DB Kit update DB list all. So you could run that anytime you want to update all of the databases. That would be one, for example, that if you were doing automated updates, you would have a cron job running this command either once a week or once a month, whenever you felt uh, was the, the right interval for updating the databases. To be honest, I don't do this on my system. Part of the reason is that I don't want an automated update to suddenly kick in while somebody is running a large series of blast searches. Also, in most cases, the database files don't change too much, say, from one month to the next. So unless you absolutely have to have the most recent new sequences, you'll get pretty much the same hits in your searches, even with slightly older databases. This next one is in here mainly just for comic purposes. Uh, delete dblist all would delete all of your databases. And that's a pretty dangerous one, so I don't recommend it. But there might actually be cases where uh, you did want to totally clean up and just delete the databases and start fresh. So uh, that is possible. Uh, by uh, contrast, though, blastdbkit configure is always safe to run. What this does is to do a complete check through the installed databases and make sure that all the files are there that need to be there and also update the reports and update the biolegato menus that list which databases are there. Sometimes this can fix problems uh, that are there and in fact the configure function is done by all of the other uh, blast DB kit commands, add, update, delete, and so forth, uh, because we want to always make sure that we're correctly reflecting what's actually installed on the system. I should mention that NCBI distributes a script called update blastdb.perl that does a lot of the same things as blastdb kit. So I want to show why I decided to write blastdb kit from scratch. And the first reason is that to run uh, NCBI's Perl script, you have to install a number of non-standard Perl libraries. BlastDB Kit uses only standard Python, so you don't have to do any extra work to get that to run. Uh, BlastDB Kit has a number of new functions, which include, of course, the local and remote uh, FTP reports, and especially the FTP report, as we mentioned before, gives you an estimate of the final sizes of the files once they have been uh, decompressed and de-archived. And that estimate is done using empirically derived uh, compression ratios based on actual downloads. So it's usually pretty accurate. Um, the uh, other point that's very important is that in testing, I found that update BlastDB appears to always download databases, regardless of whether they're newer than the ones already installed on the system. And, and so uh, you might be re-downloading the latest version of the database, uh, whereas BlastDBKit always checks and only downloads the files that are actually new at NCBI. Uh, the addition of the all keyword was actually a very useful um, way of shortcutting having to put in a whole comma separated list of databases. Uh, another uh, feature of BlastDB Kit is that it supports FASTA. So the FASTA programs are uh, a 
an alternative to BLAST for searching BLAST databases. And uh, BLAST DB could create some name files that FASTA needs in order to find the databases. And then finally, of course, as I mentioned, BLAST DB kit creates the BioLegato menu items that include the list of databases that are currently installed when you're doing BLAST searches. It shouldn't be surprising that downloads will get interrupted for large files, and this happens more often than you might think. Now, as we saw before, if you go to the GenBank directory and keep typing ls-l star.tar.gz, you'll always see which tar file is currently being downloaded. And if you keep typing the ls-l command, you'll see that the size of the file will keep getting bigger. Now, if the file doesn't keep getting bigger, if you can go uh, a few minutes later and it's the same and maybe five or ten minutes later and it's the same that probably means that the download has timed out and so um, if if one of these files is not changing you may need to restart the download now fortunately that is a really easy thing to do in fact restarting a download is as simple as just clicking on the run button again in the install update menu without doing anything so in other words all of the choices you made is for which databases to install are still there you just click on the run button and blastdb kit will worry about whether or not uh, uh, files were in, were correctly downloaded or not. Let's say, for example, that something like the non-redundant nucleotide is downloaded in 24 or 25 sections. Well, if it only got to 12 and it cr crashed midway through 12, then it will detect that 1 through 11 are still fine and it will reinitiate the download with 12 so that you get a complete copy of the 12th file and then the 13th and 14th all the way until the download is complete. So you could restart as many times as you need to and depending on the internet traffic during the day or how much load NCBI has, you will find often enough that downloads will get interrupted. So this makes it really convenient to just resume. Uh, you can't uh, there's no there's no downside to it because uh, as long as you have a current copy uh, of each d a database file, uh, the program will or BlastDB Kit will uh, uh, just ignore that, and so the worst that could happen is that you get a message back at the end that uh, nothing else was uh, needed to be installed. So that will uh, make things very easy for what is otherwise sometimes a frustrating task. So although this video has focused today on BLAST databases, BLAST is only a small part of the many integrated capabilities accessible through the object-oriented BioLegato applications. And these include basic sequence tasks, database query and sequence searches, sequence alignment and phylogeny, genome and transcriptome assembly and visualization, and comparative genomics. Visit the Birch YouTube channel for more videos describing Birch. That concludes our presentation. Above all, I want to acknowledge the authors of BioLegato, Graham Alver and Abiel Roche. I also want to make sure to thank the organizations that made this work possible, including Genome Prairie, Manitoba Innovation, Energy and Mines, and the University of Manitoba. Birch is free open source software that can be downloaded at the address above. Birch is free, but you pay for it by citing in your publications the software that you use. Without that software, your research would be literally impossible to do. Please check the Birch Bioinformatics YouTube channel for more videos on Birch.